Around the Ozarks in Five, brought to you by the Butterfly Palace. Have the best day ever at the Butterfly Palace. The Springfield Green County Park Board, reminding you to go play. And Roto-Rooter Plumbing and Drain Service. Call Southwest Missouri's best plumber today for a free estimate. Here are your hosts, Ethan and Sarah Foreheads. Hey, hey, good morning to you. It is Thursday, and we're moving our way through the week and closer to Christmas day by day. So, you know, what else are you going to do? Here we yeah, go. pretty wild. Well, Springfield school leaders say a new study shows enrollment in the district is dwindling, and that could mean changes with some of the buildings eventually. The drop is expected over the next 10 years by about 300 students. At some buildings, the study projected more students in some of the buildings, while other buildings, they say, would have fewer students, and then they would be really underutilized, uh, the, the space, that is. So at the same time that they're doing this study, the future of the two elementary schools is still being discussed, that being Pershing and Robertson. Now, interestingly, it could be that they either get closed down or the other extreme, they could get expanded. So they are um, trying to figure out the best plan of action with this new study showing all the numbers and the futures. And so the future of those two buildings is still being discussed. We'll keep you posted when they figure out the best plan forward. Um, Meanwhile, if you have a child who might be interested in a choice program through Springfield Public Schools, now is your time to apply for that. The choice program is time outside of your normal classroom schedule, so you'd be doing this instead, uh, to focus on studies that they might have an interest in. School officials say it is meant to help students find what they might be passionate about studying for their future. The program is offered for grades four through six, as well as eighth graders. So if you'd like to sign up, registration ends this Friday at 4.30 p.m. That's interesting. I like the idea of that because there's so many options out there for careers that, you know, I can remember back when I was a kid, I didn't even know existed, but TV news reporting was one of them. I didn't find out about until college. I mean, now they have journalism classes in high school, but back when I was in high school, we didn't. And uh, I, I... I, it's so tough for young people, and now we have our own kids growing up, so we talk to them about this, but it's so tough to figure out what, what you want to do with the rest of your life every day, you know? Right, yeah. Uh, I mean, parents can help see what kids are naturally good at, and, and and kids are attracted towards some things, and I guess that's what you you start following and going for, but I think this is great. I mean, I think what grades... Fourth and Four six. through six and then eighth grade. Yeah, I have friends whose kids have been in choice programs in the past and really loved it for that reason because it's like you get they're passionate about what they're studying. So yeah. Uh four through six seems a little young for me. I think eight through like tenth grade is the sweet spot. But what do I know? Uh not much. <laughs> <laughs> Not much. Uh, we told you it was likely. Now it's official. Coach Bobby Vitrino is back at the University of Arkansas. The former Arkansas and Missouri State head coach will be the Razorbacks' next offensive coordinator. We told you that they were vetting him, and apparently that worked out. Uh, Petrino worked at Texas A&M this past season as uh, offensive coordinator. The Aggies ranked 53rd in the nation in total offense, so they did pretty well. Arkansas, for by comparison, uh, ranked 106. So they're banking on his coaching abilities when it comes to the offensive side. Of course, you'll recall he got into some trouble when he was at the University of Arkansas. He was having an affair with a former volleyball player, uh, got into a motorcycle crash with her on the bike, lied about it, and then they found out that he had hired her to work in the athletic department, all of which is frowned upon. Uh, but apparently they've made amends and, uh, he's back at the university of Arkansas. So again, excited about the coaching ability. Go hogs. Maybe, maybe not (laughs) the the person. Well, I'm sure they they are. I don't know. Maybe it truly is amends and he's made a turnaround. I don't know. I don't know the guy. Um, all right. Oh, still you. Uh, Some sad stats out of the CDC last year. Suicide, uh, was at its highest rate ever. CDC says more Americans uh, took their lives by suicide than uh, any other year on record. 50,000 people. Uh, Something to note, suicide among children and teens has actually gone down quite a bit, which is really, really good news, necessary news. 
the Department of Health launched 988. That's a phone number. Suicide crisis hotline available 24-7. So you just dial 988 on your cell phone and you or uh, anyone you know who needs help can get the help there. Yeah. And they launched that and it still hasn't really taken off. Obviously, 911 is still the number that most people call and you can do that. But they prefer the 988 because that one is specific to that issue. And so the people who answer the phone immediately are the ones that you actually need to talk to. Whereas with 911, they yeah. might, I mean, they will talk to you as well, but 988 has specific they are trained people for that. Standing by, ready to handle that particular call. Yeah. Uh, this is uh, super good news. 53 nonprofits getting a big piece of the pie. This year's Price Cutter Charity Championship Golf Tournament raised $1.03 million. It is the second highest amount in tournament history. So cool. Uh, since the tournament started, the Price Cutter Charity Championship has raised more than $20 million for local charities. That is really, really incredible. The money helps nonprofits meet all kinds of needs right here in Southwest Missouri. And uh, I was at the the lunch. They call it the day of sharing. It's actually on Giving Tuesday where they have all the charities out. Convoy of Hope is one. Uh, we're proud to be part of that. And uh, so I got to go to the lunch and uh, they have the presentation where they award the the checks to all the charities and some of the charities get to talk about what they do. And it's it's just a really, really great day. It's a great tradition in the Ozarks and the really the price cutter charity championship is a is a jewel in the Ozarks. It it's and, and when it comes to the, the PGA, it is one of uh their best attended and highest uh fundraising event that they have when it comes to these charity events. So it's yeah, very, very that's good. really cool. Um, I've been out there a few times in the past and it was always a great time. Very, very cool. Um, okay. If you like a real Christmas tree in your home, now's the time. Growers say that there are fewer growers and at that, some of the growers didn't have the greatest seasons because of dryness. Uh, so they might have fewer trees. So the moral of the story is if you want a live tree and you have not yet gotten one, the sooner, the better. Interesting. Did we ever? Did we ever do a live tree? I think we no. did one, didn't we? Mm. Didn't I thought we did one maybe uh, before kids? I don't know. I don't did remember do ever that? doing it, but I think I love the idea. I'm like, oh, let's go chop down a tree. That sounds very Griswold, and I kind of love it, <laughs> but, but not really. Um, apparently, because I I don't recall that I've ever done that in my whole life. Okay. My sister um, got married around Christmas time. And so my mom had several trees that she got um, set up for that wedding. And so we've had a tree for a long, long time because it was super nice, you know, and we took pretty good care of it. And then last year was the year after about 12 years it retired. And now we have one that you bought what pre-lit last year on discount somewhere. Yeah like yeah. the day after Christmas or something. So anyway, we got to put that up for the first time this year. And I will say that um, it goes up in sections and they're very well labeled. And I really appreciated that. Yep. You don't want to screw that up. up. Well, I know, but I did have to, I did have to oversee the top piece. Mm. So good work. Good since work. I'm so tall on everything. Um, all right. Who are you listening to on Spotify? There's a good chance that it is Taylor Swift. She <laughs> has grabbed the top artist spot of 2023. No surprise. That is no surprise. Uh, it is a global competition, by the way. So very impressive. She had more than 26 billion streams since January 1st of this year. That's incredible because, you know, she's been big for several years now she's been able to hold on to it yeah is she 33 how old is she uh, i feel like i've read that recently yeah because she and travis are the same age which i was a little surprised by but I, yeah i think it's something like that i'll i'll uh do the Go google, to the google box all right i'll move yeah. on uh this friday is the first friday art walk always a good time in downtown springfield your favorite monthly arts event in the evening for local artists live music food art demonstrations, fun, and a few surprises along the way. 
And I can imagine that it will look much more Christmassy, which is just a good time. So have fun out there. Um, and then also, and finally, if you would like to help fill a trailer for people in need, you can head out to Republic to do so. They are having a community event where they are trying to get enough supplies for people in need to have a Christmas dinner. So they are looking for things like this. Green beans, instant potatoes, canned corn, gravy mixes, canned sweet potatoes, canned milk, stove top stuffing. And the drop-off location is uh, at the Price Cutter in Republic. It's open from 10 a.m., until 3 p.m. on November 25th, December 2nd, November 25th, already passed, December 2nd and December 9th. So head out to Price Cutter in Republic. Um, and yeah, that's today, December or Thursday. What am I talking about? Oh my gosh, my calendar's off. Everybody leave me alone. Saturday, Saturday, December 2nd. There we go. Um, and then the following Saturday as well, December 9th. So well, just because you butchered that, I want to tell you that uh, you did you get something right during this uh, podcast. Uh -oh. Taylor uh, T Swift is thirty three years old. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. I totally redeemed myself. Um, <laughs> Which is shocking to me because uh, don't you remember when she was a kid? She was a kid. Yeah. I mean, sort of. You know what's funny is I never she really was a kid. She was a was teenager. A when I mean, she I think started. she's super talented, but I actually don't know every lyric to every song, but apparently I'm living under a rock because 26 billion people do. So there's that. Um, but that's not surprising to me. I listen to a lot more, um, like podcasts, like messages, uh, books, audio books than I do music. Yeah. You don't have to explain yourself why you don't listen to Tay Tay. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> he just said Tay Tay. You guys go, I mean, you're like this. Why would you not? Well, I knew her when she was a kid. I'll tell you that much. <laughs> tell you that much. <laughs> okay, right. sorry. Back to Republic, by the way. It's Saturday. Oh. There you go. Saturday. <laughs> this Saturday. This Saturday. I clicked it's on confirmed. the calendar on the bottom of my computer, and it, we haven't flipped over to December yet. You know, it's just the 30th today, but I was looking at November's calendar instead of for the weekend. Anywho. Um, we'll okay, everybody. Time. Have a great Wednesday, we are um Thursday. <laughs> Somebody, I'm going back to bed. Everybody, good night. Good night, everybody. Going back to bed. <laughs> Somebody help me. All right. Have a great Thursday. <laughs> and uh we will see you on Friday. It's time for Around the Ozarks Wake Up Weather, sponsored by Scooters Coffee. Here's your host, meteorologist Abby Dyer. Good morning, everyone. Happy Thursday. It's November 30th, and it's going to rain in the Ozarks today. That's the big headline for you. Temperatures not too bad this morning. We are starting off in the low 40s, so it's comfortable compared to the last couple of mornings when temperatures were feeling like the teens. Uh, warmer this morning, but that's thanks to some cloud cover and a south wind that has returned to the Ozarks overnight. No rain out there yet, but I think it's going to be after the lunch hour that we start to see some of those few first showers show up. And then by this evening, that's going to be the best chance for rain into the Ozarks as we head into the overnight hours and push on into Friday morning. There's going to be a lot of shower activity. In fact, it's a really good chance for a good soaking rain across the Ozarks. Anywhere from a half inch to an inch of rain will be possible. I think we'll see some of those higher rain totals down south of I-44. And if I uh, didn't mention it already, well, now is the time to get out, get the errands done early in the day today, because by this evening and tonight, I think rain chances will be widespread across the Ozarks. In fact, for many of us, I think the evening drive will be a wet one. Widespread rain in the Ozarks today through early tomorrow morning. A low pressure system developed off the West Coast yesterday, and it's slowly been making its way across the country, creating some heavy downpours for the Four Corners region. That's where the area of low pressure was centered. This is all out happening at a Ahead of a frontal boundary. So we are going to see the active weather for us as well. Heavy rain and potentially even some severe weather from East Texas back through portions of Western Louisiana. Thankfully for us, we're not going to see any severe weather, but I can't rule out some rumbles of thunder, maybe a few lightning strikes. Again, no severe weather expected for us though, which is nice.
For the Ozarks, it's just this slow, steady rain that lasts through much of the evening overnight tonight and then probably tapers off early in the day on Friday. I'm thinking mid-morning. We're done with the rain chances. Cloud cover will linger, and it's going to be a pretty good shot at seeing some heavy downpours. In fact, I think most of the area will see a half inch of rain. Totals get higher as you head back south of I-44, West Plains, back through Harrison, places in northern Arkansas will see some of those higher rainfall totals. We shouldn't have too much of an issue with flooding. I think it comes slow enough, and we're not waterlogged at this point. Should just be slow and steady rain showers, but promises to be kind of sloppy on the roads later today. We will have some ponding maybe on the roadways from time to time, so it's something to keep in mind definitely slow it down for the evening drive. And if you're going to be out late tonight, we've got cooler weather then in store for us for the weekend. Yesterday was a fantastic day in the Ozarks with highs near 60. And today, I think we're only going to make it to the low 50s. And then we're talking about cooler conditions heading in for the weekend. Numbers by the middle of next week, though, will be back above average again. So it's not long that we have to stay with highs in the 40s. Today, I think we're in the low 50s, but there's rain chances in the forecast. Starting tomorrow, temperatures look kind of on the cool side. The outlook, though, December 6th through 12th, it's looking nice. I think we'll see temperatures that are back above the seasonal averages. As I mentioned, I think that happens again by the middle of next week. High temperature today, 52 degrees. I expect rain chances to really start to develop around the evening drive time, but we could have a few light showers out by mid-afternoon. A south breeze will be in the forecast today, 15 miles an hour, so kind of windy. And then we'll see highs fall to the 40s on Friday as that front passes through the area. That'll keep us in the 40s for Saturday and Sunday. I see a small indication that we could have a bit of light rain Saturday night. I don't think it impacts the weekend forecast too much, but the weekend's looking kind of chilly. And then we'll see temperatures in the 40s again for Monday and Tuesday of next week before the 50s are back. That happens by next week on Wednesday. Around the country, what's making headlines, that severe weather threat that I mentioned that's going to be back in eastern Texas today, that moves east into the Mississippi Valley as we head closer to Friday. So the severe chance will remain for the southern United States. That's really where the most active weather across the country will stay. And then if we're looking out in Hawaii, I told you about some of the flooding concerns there yesterday. This storm system over Kona still causing some problems and excessive rainfall is possible for the Hawaiian islands as we head through Thursday and Friday as well. All right, it is time for the Around the Ozarks Wake Up Weather Brain Twister question for you. This is sponsored by Scooter's Coffee. If you uh, entered... Yesterday, I'm going to have the answer to yesterday's Brain Twister trivia question, and it was, what was the first song played on Mars? Yes, the planet Mars. Do you think it was A, Twinkle Twinkle Little Star, B, Happy Birthday, C, What a Wonderful World, or D, Across the Universe? All of those would be pretty fitting for a first song played on a new planet, uh, and if you Googled this one, if you broke the rules and Googled, you probably came up or what came up was probably the wrong answer. Um, it was actually in 2008. The answer is Across the Universe. D, Across the Universe by the Beatles. In 2008, it became the first song beamed into deep space. Um the song that came up when you Googled was titled Reach for the Stars, which was actually not an option on my on my list here. But Reach for the Stars actually holds the Guinness World Record book for being the first music broadcast from space. Uh, but it actually did not play on Mars because Curiosity, uh, the rover up there, did not have speakers. So kind of a little catch there. Uh, if you Googled this though, you probably read that Reach for the Stars by Will I Am was the first music ever broadcast in space. Not true for the planet Mars. It was 2008 Across the Universe by the Beatles. That was the first song to be beamed into deep space. So D, the answer from yesterday. Congrats to everybody uh, that answered that correctly. All right, I've got tomorrow's question for you. Who is credited with helping make mac and cheese popular in the United States. Do you think it is A, Winston Churchill, B, Nikola Tesla, C, Marie Curie, or D, 
Thomas Jefferson. I should have included a fifth option here, which would be E, toddlers everywhere, but that's not on the list today. So uh, log on, let me know what you think is the correct answer, and I'll have the answer early tomorrow morning. That's what's happening on Around the Ozarks Wake Up Weather. Everybody stay safe today. No severe weather, but we will have rain on the radar. Again, that happens for the second half of the afternoon into this evening. We'll hold the rain showers overnight tonight. You might hear some thunder, but it's not going to be severe. I've got cooler air that builds in tomorrow, and I will chat with you early tomorrow morning. Thanks for listening.